Good day and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. And before I start kind of really delving into guides for Season 2 and Heroics and Mythic Plus, I thought it would be really cool to kind of just cover what players should look at before engaging in hard content. So basically what preparation can you do before engaging in hard content, what kind of buffs can you get? What kind of consumables can you get? And just how can you make your life a little bit easier? So we're going to go through a couple of categories of consumables that you can use to improve your experience in harder based content. Now you can use this in pretty much any PvE situation, be that raids, be it Mythic Plus. So feel free to use it at any given time. The first ones we'll start off with are probably the easiest, and these are potions. Now, the basic standard potions are a health and a mana potion. These have a five minute cooldown, and although they may not seem like much, uh, being able to pop, you know, for a tank, a sixth of your health, or a mage, a quarter of your mana pool is pretty important. The next step is obviously food buffs. So, food buffs are buffs that you can get when you partake in a meal. And you get two types, you get a primary stat buff and a secondary stat buff. The one you take is going to be dependent on your class. Generally, it's the lowest of your tertiary stats or secondary stats. Either way, having the food buff does help. Uh, for example, on my character, it counts as 1% towards my mastery target. And 1%, again, doesn't sound like lots. But remember, we're stacking buffs here. So this is 1% from here, but then 1% from potential other buff sources, etc, etc. You can end up gaining a couple minute advantages individually, but that end up being a sizable buff uh, altogether. So it's definitely something that I would suggest you take a look at uh, and try and organize. So yes, uh, obviously food buffs are pretty important. But what next? Uh, well, firstly, files or flasks, as some people like to refer to them. These are 30-minute buffs that specifically target one stat. Uh, for tanks, for example, versatility is the number one point. And you can see that it increases versatility quite substantially. I went from a 12% versatility overall to a 15% versatility, uh, which is quite sizable uh, if you look at it. And the effects are quite important. You know, I gained an uh, increase in my damage and healing done by almost three whole percent, and further damage reduction of 1.6% uh, on top of what I had before, which, you know, again, maybe it doesn't sound like a lot, but these are the margins that start to matter when you're trying to push higher content. You know, when you combine this with our 1% mastery, uh, combining that on top with our ability to add potions in, uh, combine that with our ability on top to have other buffs, etc. It's important. Primal whetstones or whetstones are also something that can improve your time. Uh, this is for melee classes specifically, but for range classes, for example, you can uh, get certain bits of ammunition that can improve your damage, etc. So, yeah, there's definitely incentive to look at facilitating once again, you know these kind of buffs. The next ones that we're going to be taking a look at are armor kits slash gems slash enchantments. So armor kits, gems, enchantments, these are all permanent buffs. So these are based on your equipment and these generally will attach themselves to your equips and give you permanent buffs. For example, frosted armor kit gives me more armor, uh, gives me more primary stats. Again, you may think, wow, 150 armor, does it really matter? 100 in primary stats, does it matter? But again, we add these on, we add these onto a Draconic Ruin later on, you add these onto the food buff, you add these onto the flask buff, you add these onto the weapon buff, it all starts to add up and you will perform better. It's the same with gems, you know, each gem on their own doesn't amount to much, but when you add up all of my gem slots that I have, that's an extra 350 haste, 350 haste and an extra, you know, 210 mastery, for example, or 420 haste. And that works out to being an extra 2% on my recast timers. 
etc. It's all super important stuff when you start to really add it up. Uh, I know sometimes it can be difficult to see uh, the effects, especially when you are someone who does them over time, but it's definitely important. Uh, the Draconic Ruin, for example, is another 87 strength, or agility, or intellect, and you'll go, wow, 87. But again, that's 1%. Add that on to the 150 that I got from my Frost Armor Kit, that's an extra 230. I'm now 3% better in terms of my main stat. Same with Vantus Ruins, which increase the secondary stats and are useful for certain bosses. Maybe you're hitting a brick wall and a boss within the raid, and you want to pop a rune. Again, all of these things together will give you that extra 2 to 3% performance that could push you over the gap. And once it pushes you over the gap, you can get more items or higher level items, and these will improve how you perform. Enchantments are the same. An extra 100 leech, an extra bit of haste, an extra bit of mastery. These are all super important. So let's talk about item enhancements and consumables. Armor kits are where we'll kind of start. Uh, they're pretty simple. They only apply to leg armor. Ideally, you want to get the one that applies the highest armor. But for most cases, you're looking at what applies the best primary stat. In terms of enchanting your weapons or enchants in general, it's a little bit more difficult, but generally there are certain slots that have priority in terms of enchanting. Uh, these are slots like, for example, your gloves, your cape, uh, your chest piece, your weapons, and your rings. You can enchant secondary stats onto your rings. You can enchant some really good weapon effects that can increase your damage or increase your damage reduction. Uh, you can enchant your cape with a tertiary stat like leech. And you can enchant your uh, hands or your braces with some additional stats as well. You do get some other buffs for your feet uh, that can give you a little bit of stamina. I suggest taking those if you're looking for a default one. However, there's some other ones for like speed increases that are just a little bit of quality of life that maybe you want to consider picking up. It's going to depend on your class and I do always recommend looking at icy veins or any kind of tertiary World of Warcraft support. Uh, website to look at your best build if you are someone that struggles but generally speaking prioritize your key stats so if you want to enchant something and a key stat for you is crit and you can enchant crit on that item do so if you can enchant intellect agility or strength and you prioritize one of those do that it's a pretty simple system gems kind of fit into two gaps so you get what's called tinkers Tinkers can only apply to engineer profession equipment. And tinkers are super hel helpful in certain situations. For example, you can get combat reses, etc. Or, alternatively, if you don't have tinkers, just prioritize the highest level of gem that you can find. Now, there are unlimited diamonds, which are a different kind of gem in their entirety. However, the basic gems uh, will do for you they're relatively cheap and they provide a nice sizable boost to your secondary stats if you fill up all your prismatic slots. You can add prismatic slots to your items as well uh, through the uh, vault system, so that's pretty helpful. Then we get the temporary buffs. These are Vantus Ruins, Food and Drink, Potions, Flasks, pretty much any files wet stones, pretty much the things we discussed right in the beginning of the video. And the temporary buffs help, but you need to make sure that A, you have enough consumables for whatever you're doing. So if you're going to go join a heroic raid or a normal raid or a mythic raid and you come with one file of versatility, for example, probably not a good call, considering you're probably going to be there for a couple of hours. So make sure you're well stocked up on these. Food, files, wet stones, all of these items, just make sure you keep a couple of them in your bag at any given time. I, for one, always have a couple flasks of everything pretty much in my bag. There's some you can avoid, like elixirs aren't really currently in a usable state. Bandages aren't really something I would consider using. Explosives and devices are more niche than anything else. Uh, so there's some you can avoid. You can really use those if you want to, if you're trying to get really into it. 
but rather stick to these primary ones and you'll do fine. The Draconic Augment Ruin is probably the most expensive one you'll find, but it's not something you need to buy uh, unless you're doing like designated heroic guild runs and things like that. So yeah, uh, in general, pretty good coverage when it comes to preparation. I hope this gives you an idea of all the things you can really look at to truly optimize your character and really just improve their overall performance. Let me know if you think I missed anything important or if there's anything you'd like to add. I would really appreciate it. I can put it in the comments uh, or do another video on it if you, know, you feel it's necessary. But yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like. And yeah, that's probably going to be it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care, stay safe and bye.